Okay, welcome to February. I like February because it's closer to March and we hit spring in March. So it always feels like almost there, even though we're still in winter. Some of us are still in winter. It depends on where we are, right? Take a nice comfortable seat. Today we'll get into and towards wild thing pose, katamakrasana. It's a back bending pose. So as you take a seat here, sit up nice and tall through the spine, close your eyes or turn your gaze low. We did a great job all throughout January of taking notice in the practice, take note right here. How is your breath moving through the body? Quick body scan to notice what needs a little bit more time and attention throughout this practice today. Also letting yourself smile, noticing the pieces of the body, the emotions within the self that are feeling quite good. There's always a little bit of both sides, right? We have to allow ourselves to feel all the things. And then in today's practice and throughout the month of February, I'm asking us to lean into letting go. For me, that's letting go of some self-limiting beliefs. It might be the same or a little bit different for you. What can you release? Bring their palms together, thumbs to your sternum. And as that intention settles in, give it one more breath, full power. And then swing the arms up to the sky, open the eyes and lean over to one side, side body stretch. Look up towards the sky and bring both hands back up. Keep looking up as you lean over to the second side and your side body stretch. And inhale, both arms reach back up to the sky and then fold back through the center, fold all the way over Reach the arms out in front of you. Maybe a light stretch in the outer hips here. Some days this is an uncomfortable position. Some days it works a little better. Notice how it's coming in for you today. And then we'll change. Come on over to all fours. Place your hands under the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Get us going in good old cat and cow. Try to see the full range of your spine move in one direction and the other. Maybe wag the tail to let the spine move a little bit more side to side as well. And then build back towards a neutral spine and lift your right leg up and back. Flex the foot, point the toes down to the floor. Extend your left arm out in front. Draw the navel again up in towards the spine, long reach through the tailbone. And now curl elbow and knee in and extend out. 
Do it a few more times in, extend out. Notice the play and balance here through both the flow and the stability needed. One more time, curl in, now leave, extend it out. And switch hands, lower the left hand, pick up your right hand and open the body fully towards the side. Try to lift the right hip more on top of the left, if you will, much like we do when we balance in half moon shape. And can you, again, hug elbow and knee in towards each other and extend out, getting right into this big movement today, elbow and knee in and extend out, kind of crunch, elbow and knee in, and extend out. Lower your right hand, lower the left leg, I'm sorry, the right leg. Pause for a moment in between. And then second side, so lift the left hand up and your right arm. So start with that opposite arm and leg. Good. and then elbow and knee in and extend out. Do this several times, just working with your breath. In and out. Next time you're extended out, leave the leg but drop the hand and switch to your second side, extend the left arm, and then open the hips. So I kind of flip my right foot more towards the long side of the mat so that there's room and balance to open to the side. And again, curl in elbow and knee and extend. A little side body crunch there. Works into the obliques. Totally different sense of balance on the side. Turn it back down, lower the hand and the leg. Stretch to downward facing dog, tuck the toes and lift the hips. Little paddle through the feet, little shake of your head. Keep a deep bend in both knees and then walk the hands all the way backwards to the feet. Ragdoll pose opening up and some of these very familiar movements. Ragdoll pose here, trying to just slump over, really release the spine. Let go of the tension and weight. and slowly come up to standing. Roll the shoulders up, back and down. And roll the shoulders forward and down. You know, I always feel like in a lot of ways I have the same like three or four themes because it just takes reminding over and over again, lift the arms up to the sky what to work on, what to work with and through. Exhale, forward fold. Walk the hands out to plank pose. So letting go something that uh, comes up for me quite often. Hold here in plank pose. We're looking to find stability in this position. Part of what stability always offers me is that opportunity to look and see what's not stable, what's not coming together. And I use that for the positive. Stay right here. How does it feel as you continue on a few more breaths in the top of plank, asking a bit more of yourself, is it still working? Is it more release in the exhale that's needed? Stay, stay, stay. You've got this. Five, four, three, two, one. Lower flat down to your mat. 
Belly down, back bend series. Then extend the arms behind you, turn the palms up towards the sky, and lift everything that you can up. Shalabhasana, this is locust pose. And then release down. Bring the forearms in front of you now for Sphinx pose. Elbows right underneath the shoulders. Let the legs be a little wider apart. Easy on the glutes, no need to squeeze in tight there, just let it be. More of a yen experience of the Sphinx pose for a moment. Are there any particular tight spots in the spine? Can you give a little bit more breath and attention here? Knowing that we're leading into Kathamakrasana, into wild thing pose, it asks a lot in quads and hips and shoulders and upper back. So we're going to try to highlight all of those pieces throughout the prep today. Lie back down to your belly and extend the arms out to either side in a T shape. Roll over your right shoulder and step the left foot behind the right. You can let your head lie down onto the mat. And then come back across the center and stretch the left arm out. Roll over that left side. Step the right foot behind you. For me, the key to making this more comfortable is allowing the head to rest down. Don't try to keep it up. Come back through your center, both hands beside you for cobra. Keep a nice deep bend in your elbows. Go to about 50% of your regular height than cobra. So just half lift here, we could call it baby cobra. Look towards the front of your mat as you lift the chest, press down through the feet, down through the hands. Nice deep bend in the elbows still, hug the elbows into your side. Lift just a little bit higher now, about 75%. Take another breath. And then release all the way down and press back to child's pose, hips to your heels. Let the back fully round in child's pose, a nice release from those belly down back bends. And then come up to all fours. Right hand out to the side and then lift it all the way up to the sky. We're going to thread the needle three times on this side. Exhale, shoulder, ear, side of the face down. And then inhale, lift right back up. Exhale, thread it through. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, thread and stay. Left hand is up to you. It can stay right beside your face or reach it out in front of you or up to the sky. You could even drop it behind the right hip if you'd like. Bring the left hand back beside your face wherever it is. Help yourself back up to all fours. Let's move on to the second side. Left hand goes out and then up. Open twist into the closed twist. Elbow, uh, I'm sorry, shoulder, ear, side of the face down. Inhale, lift it back up. Exhale and thread it through. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, thread it through. I feel like one more time. Inhale, lift. Exhale, thread and stay. Right hand again can stay in front of your face or out in front, up to the sky. If that's not enough options, even behind the hip. Mm -hmm. 
Bring the right hand back beside your face. Use it to help you up to all fours. Downward facing dog. Pedal out your feet right there and downward facing dog. Stay with it for a few moments. Come forward to plank pose. And then push back to downward facing dog. Do it one more time, forward to plank pose. And push up and back, downward facing dog. 15 minutes into class, we better get into some lunges. Step your right foot forward to your lunge. Lift the right arm up to the sky and revolve the lunge. Take the right hand to the inside of your leg. Can you get your right shoulder to go lower than your knee? And then take the right hand to the front of your shin. We don't do this very often. Front of the shin and set the hand down to the outside of your foot. It's in a sense pinning the leg back and with as much power as you're pulling back on the right upper arm bone, I want you to push forward on the right shin. If you bruise easily, please be careful here. You might not want to give it too much. It's just that little extra push, knee forward, as the arm is pulling back. And then I want you to lower the left knee down to the floor and thread the arm now under the thigh to go hand to the outside of the foot again. But now you're crouched down and we're just going to sway a little bit. Do you have some movement? Can you find some movement? Just a little forward and back here. It's more about getting a little bit of a rounded upper back letting that shoulder sink down low. We'll unthread that and go all the way back to your good old regular low lunge with the back knee lifted, right back to where we started, right hand up to the sky. And step it all the way backwards to downward facing dogs. So lower the hand and step back. Inhale, come forward to plank. Exhale, back downward facing dog. Inhale, forward to plank. So we're really moving into that stability each time through plank pose, even as we create some shoulder opening exercises throughout the practice. Step the left foot forward now into your low lunge. We start again as we often do, left hand up to the sky. Okay, listen up. Lower the left hand down to the inside of the foot. We're trying to sink that left shoulder lower, lower than the line of the knee, so that you can wrap the, forearm, the upper arm bone, excuse me, to the lower shin and try to place the hand to the outside of your foot. I'm going to change my direction in case it's helpful to see. So it's much like the next pose, but it's to the front instead of the back. And there's this isometric stretch of pushing the shin forward, but the upper arm bone back. We'll release, bring the hand back to the inside, lower the back knee down to the ground. And again, you're trying to go really low here. So you have that bit of a round through the spine, drop the left arm under the thigh to get it to the outside of the foot. And then rock just a bit back and forth. Sometimes just creating a little bit of different movement.
can be super helpful, I find, in releasing the patterns and the thoughts that I think I can or can't do something. Just a little different here. And then we're gonna unwrap it all and go back to your good old regular low lunge. Pick up that back knee again. Lift the left arm to the sky. Lower the hand, step it all the way back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Good, inhale, come forward to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Look forward to your hands now. You'll want to try a jump here. Step, jump, or walk all the way up to the front. Inhale, half lift. Nice long reach through the spine. Forward fold. Stand up, reach the arms to the sky. Palms together, center of the chest. Nicely done. Let's keep working. Inhale, lift. Exhale, forward fold. Digging it through our good old fashioned Surya Namaskar A, half lift. Step, jump back, lower down. Cobra, down dog. Look to your hands, step or try the jump again. Half lift and fold. Stand and reach the arms to the sky, palms to the chest. One more time. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Half lift. Plank pose. Lower to the mat. Belly down, back bend. Downward facing dog. Look forward to your hands. Step or jump to the front of the mat. Half lift. Fold it over. Reach to the sky. Stand up. Bring palms together. Center your chest. Pause right here. From here, I'm going to switch us to side plank. Place your right hand down on the floor and step your right foot back, left hand at your waist. And the easiest way there is then just to turn to the side and lift the left arm up to the sky. You're only staying for a moment. Now I want you to bring your left hand back to your waist. Look down at the floor and try to step your left foot more forward by your hand. It turns you into a low lunge. Stay in that low lunge, my friends. Take another breath. And then can you go back to side plank? Turn the back heel on its side. Turn to the outer edge of the right foot. Left foot either stays there or stacks on top, left arm up to the sky. Bring the left hand again to your waist and one more time, can you step your left foot all the way up towards your hand in a low lunge. Keep stepping until you get there and then come all the way up to high lunge. Both arms to the sky, hips, shoulders square to the front. Lower the hands to the hips and step both feet towards each other. Shake it out. Yeah, so the first side plank is with the foot further back. The second two is trying to get the foot all the way higher up towards the full length of lunge. So left hand 
down on the floor. That's the first foundation. Left foot, step it back. The right foot stays about halfway forward in your side uh, kickstand and right arm up to the sky. Okay, to change this into your low lunge, right hand to the waist, look down at your left hand, pick up the right foot and change it into your lunge. I know it's often easier said than done. This is a ton of low belly strength and hip mobility, as well as stabilizing in that bottom shoulder, all needing to work together. Okay, trying to keep the right foot more forward, just turn the toes out towards the side as you go towards the outer edge of the left leg and lift the right arm back up to the sky. From there, can you swing the right leg, woo, to stack on top of the left? And then can we step all the way back forward to the lunge? Right hand can go to the waist to help and step and swing. Come up to your high lunge, both hands to the waist, arms to the sky. Step both feet together and shake it out. Wild thing pose is essentially the same, but instead of the foot being in the front, we're stepping behind. I want to do it one more time here, and then we'll kind of shelf it for a little bit and go back to it. So go back, right hand down. Have enough room behind yourself on the mat that you can step left foot behind you instead of in front. So right hand goes down. Step the right foot back. Instead of keeping that left foot forward, step it behind you. Bottom shoulder needs to stay stable. The rest of the body needs to have room to move. Bend both knees so that you can turn your hips to face up towards the sky. Restraighten the right leg to the degree that works. You're in side plank, but with the back foot fully down. Call cut them across in a wild thing pose, just a version of side plank. To get out of this, safest on the shoulder for me is always just to sit my butt down on the ground. Don't try to oh, twist or anything, just sit down. Yep. So in that way, since we're sitting, let's try to come up into the pose from the ground. Can you bend your left foot, straighten your right leg? So I've got sole of my left foot on the ground, right heel on the ground. Place your right hand behind you. Think of lifting yourself into side plank. I'm gonna bend the right knee a little bit to get my butt off the ground. Both hips are faced up towards the sky. As you lift the hips, reach the left arm to the sky. And then in that manner, can you step the left foot back in front and make your way up to standing. Yeah, I think that wild thing pose is like picture wise, one of the prettier, really expansive expressions and yet getting in and out of it safest is uh, not graceful usually. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Okay, so let's try it on the second side. We're gonna place the left hand down. So this just looks like you're crouching, left hand helping you to stabilize. And then as you step the left foot behind you, or stretch the left leg out, now the right foot has to step over behind you and doing that bend both knees so that that left shoulder feels okay with the rotation, right arm straight up to the sky, go towards a straighter left leg only as much as works. And then just sit straight down on your bum. 
Keep the sole of your right foot flat on the ground, your left heel on the ground. It can be with a bend in the left knee. Nice open left shoulder. And lift your butt off the ground to come back into the pose. Change your focus to look at your left hand and step your right foot over and then step your left foot closer to your left hand so that you can stand back up. Yeah? Cool. Okay. Yes. Yeah, great question. So Jennifer's asking, I'm re-saying this just for the recording, should our hips be parallel to the side or up towards the sky in full wild thing? Up towards the sky. So you are basically in a full back bend, a full wheel, just with one leg extended and one arm extended but those hips we're trying to get to turn all the way, as well as the shoulders. And that gets, that's where people get stuck a lot, is that we have to have enough rotation in that bottom shoulder to allow us to open. If we stick the hands straight right away and stick that one leg straight right away, we're usually pretty stuck with hips to the side. If we can bend both things, there's more opportunity to rotate and open. Good? Okay. We're going to like shelf that for a moment, come back up to the top of the mat. Technical is good. And flow is good. Let's take a little flow piece of it. Inhale, lift up. Let the body go where it wants to go. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Step back to plank, lower down to the mat, cobra, peel it up, downward facing dog. Bring the right foot all the way through into your low lunge, both hands to the inside of your foot, spin the back heel down, try to pin our right upper arm bone to the inner thigh and swing your left arm all the way up and over. So I'm just skipping, kind of bypassing elbow to knee in that side angle pose. I'm trying to get you to stay a little bit lower. Of course, you can come up elbow to knee and have a little more ease. Looking for that extra stretch and ask the front of the hips in particular of that back leg. Now try to transfer a lot of your weight into the back leg to lift up into warrior two. Just torso straight up and down, shoulders over the hips, warrior two. Sun warrior can be a good way to see where the hips and shoulders are going in a wild thing pose. Drop the left hand down. Look over your left shoulder. Look at your left foot. And then lift the right arm up to the sky. So this is one version of sun warrior. But now if you come back to warrior two, and again, drop the left hand down to the left thigh, but now try to square your hips and shoulders more towards the right leg and lift your right arm up to the sky. This is more of the expression for Katamakrasana that we're going for. It's harder. And then lower both hands around the front foot. Step to plank pose. Find that stabilization for a couple of breaths. And then downward facing dog. We'll try it on the second side. Step the left foot forward into your low lunge. Bring both hands to the inside of your foot. 
first, spin the back heel down, try to keep the left hand as is, even palm down, flat on the mat. Pin your upper arm bone against the inner thigh and swing the right arm all the way, palm down, up and over. I get really trapped in the back hip here. It's, it's actually too low for me to get into the stretch. I know on this side, if I tent the fingers and let myself come up a little bit higher, then I can get that extra rotation in the back hip to get the stretch that I'm looking for. If your stretch is up, elbow to knee, go there. And then let's all rise up to warrior two. Again, try those two different things. So this is as if hips and shoulders are facing the side. Right hand goes down, left arm up. You're looking down the right leg. Doable. Yeah, I'm asking for the more difficult thing, which is right hand down, hip shoulders more face towards the front leg as the left arm lifts up. And let's cartwheel the hands all the way down to the mat. Step through plank. This time lower all the way down to the mat. Take the hands as wide as the mat. On the fingertips, point the elbows up to the sky and lift cobra pose on the fingertips. Stay in the high end of your cobra and very slowly look over your right shoulder. And then across your center and over the left shoulder. And over the center. Lower it down, press back to child's pose. Come through all fours. Check out a couple of rounds of cat and cow. Feel free to stay in child's pose longer if you need that little bit of extra repose or want it. Easy cat and cow here, perhaps noticing if you've got a little more room in the spine than where we started with. And everyone downward facing dog. Lift the right leg into the air, three-legged dog. Bend the knee and open the hip. We'll take wild thing pose from this position a little bit later on, but not quite yet. Just want to experience the little bit of opening and change. Hips have to face the side, of course, before they go up to the sky. Can you for a second ooh, balance on left hand, left foot? And it may, maybe not. I'm just kind of getting lighter on that right hand a couple of times. And then I want you to step your right foot all the way through into the low lunge. Drop the back knee down. Anjaneyasana, lift both arms up to the sky. Let the hips float down and forward as you pull the spine upright and a little bit back in an extension. I like palms together here to use the strengthening aspects to find an opening. And then lower both hands back down to the mat. Downward facing dog, step it all the way through. Lift your left leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Bend your knee, open the hip. So we're trying to point the left knee up towards the sky. Keep the shoulders both lifted at the same height. That usually feels like you're trying to lift the right end and rotate the left end down here to find the balance. And then same thing. Can you come up to left fingertips instead of palm? Maybe lift the hand just for a moment. Kind of getting that sense of where the balance has to change. And go back to your low lunge. Step the left foot all the way through. Lower the right knee down to the mat. And Anjaneyasana is this huge heart opening pose. Good, 
And we'll step all the way back to downward facing dog. Get off the hands for a moment. Walk the hands back to the feet. Little rag doll. And then come all the way up to standing. Good. Give yourself a hug, one arm in front of the other. Little torso rotation. Hug the other arm on top. Same thing, just a little torso rotation. Things that should feel nice. Shake it all out. Good. Take a nice wide stance on the long edge of your mat. With the hands at the waist, point the right toes towards the short edge of the mat and turn your back toes slightly in. So tiny little turn of the back foot, front foot all the way out. Like tri we're doing triangle without the arms here. Shoulders, hips stay open to the side and I want you to hinge at the hips and reach as far as you can with the head, but don't use the hands. And then come back up. We're gonna do that two more times. If it's better, like you can hold hands wherever it works. I just don't want them extended out right now so that you have to concentrate a little bit more on the core strength. Come over and up. That's it, we're gonna to switch to the other side. Hinge at the hips. Reach towards the left and up. Do it two more times. Getting used to locking in strength in the core. Good. And as you come back to the center, now turn both feet out and sit low into goddess pose, goal post pose. Elbows go out. Maybe sway a little bit side to side or just try to stay right into it. There's a tendency to want to lean forward here to get lower in the legs. Do me a favor and stay higher in your legs, but with your shoulders all the way back. So tailbone drops straight down to the floor. Your range is definitely different than mine and it might be different than your range was just the time before that you tried this. Make sure you're letting yourself be with where you are today. And we're staying down here. It should start to burn a little bit in those quads. Just a little bit longer. It's going to make the next pose feel so much better. You're here for five four, three, two, one. Nice job, straighten the legs, turn the toes forward, fold, ah, release. Put your weight forward in your toes so that you feel less weight in your heels. And a nice safe stretch down the back of the legs. Look towards your front toes and rotate into a low lunge. And again, step back into downward facing dog. I'm flipping my body around to the sake of visual. We're gonna go back to side plank, right hand, outer edge of the right foot. Step your left foot behind you and then bend all four limbs, bend at your elbows. With a little bit of a bend, rotate, think matrix position here. You rotate so that the hips are facing all the way up to the sky. Shoot the hips higher and shoot your left arm up. 
Keep the left foot as is and try to squiggle your right foot more out into wild thing. Feeling really good here. That left hand can reach further over to try to touch down to the mat. Yee. Now I want you to look down, rotate back through that matrix to downward facing dog. Pull yourself out of it all the way back to downward facing dog. From down dog, lift your left leg up into the air, three-legged dog. Bend your knee and open the hip. Thinking of that slow matrix turn, flip the dog. So slowly lower the left leg to the ground. Turn, rotate through hips and shoulders. Straighten the right leg and lift the left arm to the sky. Bend all four limbs. Untwist your matrix back to downward facing dog. Lower both knees, child's pose. So in a way, you get all bent up so that that expansion that comes is that much more of an opening picture. Okay, second side. Start in downward facing duck. Remember, we're going at it from the side plank position first. Left hand, outer edge of the left foot, and step the right foot behind you before you go anywhere else. Bend everything. Strengthen in the core like we did on that uh, triangle pose. With everything bent, rotate under that matrix line and then lift. Wiggle out the left foot straighter, left leg straighter. Try to reach the right arm further overhead if you'd like to go there. And then everything bends to unwind your matrix. Downward facing dog. Lift the right leg up into the air. As you flip the dog, think slow and steady here. Bend the top knee, rotate. Slowly release that right hand from the ground to help you. Extend into Kathamakrasana. And then you can curl back in to unwind it. Down dog, knees down, child's pose. From child's pose, sit back on your heels, bring your torso upright. A lot of big movement. We haven't done that much lately. Hope it's feeling good for you. Just to explore, take a little twist here to one side. And take a little twist to the other side. As you untwist, lie down onto your back. Lie down on your back and set up for bridge pose. Try to brush your hands close to your heels. If you are someone that very easily reaches your heels and can more reach the front of your ankles, 
still just go to your heels. Yeah? Knowing what's a little bit of an overreach is a really good thing. We just want to stay right at heels. Then bend both elbows. Press down through your feet, shoulders, head, and lift the hips up. Push a lot through your upper arm bones here. And extend your right leg straight up towards the sky. And then lift your hips a little bit higher. Friends, be good to yourself here. If my next add-on doesn't seem like a good thing for you, don't do it. I want you to try to lift your left arm up towards the sky. And then set that left elbow back down to the ground, really ground into the upper arm bones. What if you lifted the right side? And then lower the right hand. Lower your hips down to the ground. And cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Point your right knee out to the side. You're in a figure four shape with the legs. And again, I want you to push through your left heel to lift your hips up. Bridge pose in figure four shape. If you lifted your right hand up there when I asked before, try to reach it now towards your right knee. It's not going to touch. Just want you to try to reach it there. And then everything lowers down and set the right leg down. Okay, second side. Again, I don't want you to overreach. We're here at the end of practice. It's just getting the body used to a little bit of a different movement. Left leg, uh, come up into bridge pose. Getting ahead of myself, sorry, bridge pose. We always want the neck to have a little curl off of the mat, so you gotta push down a lot through head and shoulders, keeping the hands free for what comes next, of course. Lift the left leg straight up to the sky. Sometimes keeping the knee bent might make it easier to keep the hips lifted, feel free. And we're trying to lift the opposite hand first, left, uh, whew, right arm straight up to the sky. And then right upper arm bone goes down, left arm up, and left arm down. Lower the hips to the ground, cross the left ankle over the right, point the knee out to the side in that figure four shape, and try hips up again. Only adding on what works for you here, Left hand tries to hold on to left thigh or knee. And then back down, hips down, release. Like windshield wipers, take the knees some from side to side. Letting knees and feet never touch. Just windshield wiper side to side. Good, and these can come all the way into the chest and give yourself a sweet little hug here. Yogis, this is where I invite you to do any last bits of movement, whether it's just a little bit of shaking, unwinding. At this point, we did a lot of fun opening and back bend. Maybe you want one more big back bend. Give that wild thing a go or a different back bend. If you're looking to balance out all the back bendings, maybe just take yourself into something like child's pose. Okay. 
and there's no rush here, but once you have unwound sufficiently, find your final relaxation position. All stretched out along the mat, some like a seat of meditation to close the practice. Please take what works best for you. Once you find that comfortable last position, be as soft and released as possible. You're lying back, slowly guide your way back to a seated position. And once in our seat, palms together, thumbs to the sternum and Anjali Mudra. This gesture, intention, this prayer. both for now and the practice, but as you take the practice off of the mat, we bind those times together through the sound of Om. You're welcome to sing along here, to listen or to let it go. Take a deep breath in. bow in deep gratitude to yourself, each other, and for this practice. Namaste. Thanks, Betsy. You're welcome.